In all that we do, it's human nature to look for patterns and relationships. And so too in this activity. Let's have a look if we can find a pattern. Here I have recorded the length, breadth and area for the three rectangles that I created. The first one had a length of 4, a breadth of 6 and an area of 24 square units. The second one had a length of 2, a breadth of 12 and an area of 24 square units. And the third one a length of 3, a breadth of 8 and an area of 24 square units. I don't think it takes a lot for us to see a pattern here. 4 times 6 is 24. 2 times 12 is 24. And 3 times 8 is 24. If we studied this a little longer and we looked at other situations, we'd soon conclude that the area of a rectangle is given by the length of the rectangle multiplied by the breadth of the rectangle. And there we have our first formula, the formula for calculating the area of a rectangular surface. Knowing that will enable us to solve many problems. Let's start out by having a look at one. Here is a typical problem. You need to paint your garden wall. It is 46 meters long and 1,8 meters high. The paint you plan to use has a spreading rate of 7 square meters per liter. If the paint you plan to use is sold in tins of 5 liters and a tin costs 54 rand and 99 cents each, estimate the cost of painting the wall. Now 46 meters might seem a very long distance but remember that your garden wall could look something like that. In other words it actually forms a shape like that but the distance from here around to there is 46 meters. Okay, that resolved. Let's think about the situation. If we were to straighten out that wall, we'd end up with a very long rectangle that looks something like this. 46 meters by 1,8 meters. Because we know that, we can calculate the area of the wall that needs to be painted. It's 46 meters by 1,8 meters. That's equal to 46 times 1.8. That gives us 82,8 meters that's actually 82,8 square meters of wall. Remember, area is measured in square units, square meters. We solved the first part of the problem. Now we're told that the spreading rate is equal to 7 square meters per liter. Notice we're dealing here with a rate, but we'll come back to that. What this means is that with every liter of paint, you can paint an area of seven square meters. Of course, this is an average rate. Now we can use that information to determine how much paint is needed. So the amount of paint is equal to 82,8 square meters divided by 7 meters squared per liter. When we do that on our calculator, we're going to get 82,8 divided by 7. We're going to need 11,83 liters of paint. Now, we know that the paint is sold in 5 liter tons. So we're ready to calculate that therefore the number 
of tins is equal to 11,83 liters divided by 5 liters per tin. That's equal to 11.83 divided by 5, 2,366 tins. If we now think back to our lesson on rounding, we need to round this off into a whole number of tins. But we've got to be careful. Clearly, two tins is not going to be enough. We need more than two tins. And although three tins is likely to be too much, we're probably going to have to go for three tins. And we know that the tins cost 54 rand and 99 cents per tin. That'll give us 55 times 3 is 165. 165 minus the 3 cents that I overestimated, 164 rand and 97 cents. Before carrying on, I'd like to pause and draw your attention to all the different skills that we used in solving this problem. Here, we used a formula. The formula for the area of a rectangle. Here, we made sense of an average rate. Notice that the spreading rate will vary depending on different factors as you paint the wall. Over here, we worked with a constant rate. The price of the tin of paint doesn't vary in terms of the number of tins you buy or the time of the day on which you buy them. And over here, as we went from 2,36 to 3, we were involved with rounding. Amazing just how many different skills we used to solve one problem.